Hey everybody, Fun Stanford's Journey Coach Janice Whiting here. Today we have a fun card tutorial to show you, and this is kind of a, a different kind of um, video, I guess, for me because I am not in my regular location. You might notice blank wall and curtains behind me because I am actually uh, in Thailand right now um, doing a camp of sorts, helping out with the camp of sorts, and. Um, Yes, I brought my stuff, um, and I guess it was serendipitous because my sweet, I didn't know if I'd have time, but I brought it just in case, and my sweet girl is ill, she has a little bit of a fever, and so um, she's resting, and I have to be here with her, so I was like, you know what, I'm going to make use of my time, and I'm going to go ahead and show you how I made this card while she's resting, because what else am I going to do, right? <laughs> Got to make good use of my time. Um, we have been having a wonderful time here. Uh, the fever that she's had has been not fun, but despite that, we have um, been enjoying our time and this beautiful place. Actually, I think I might be able to show you the view outside our room. Let's see if, if it's not too bright. I'm going to bring it in. Um, let's see here. That is a little bit of the view outside our room. Isn't that amazing? Beautiful Thailand. And that is just a little bit um, of scenery there uh, for you to kind of get a glimpse of. But anyway, so the card that we are going to be showing you how to make today, it is beautiful because it uses one of my favorite stamp sets in our new catalog, which is uh, Peonies and actually, um, I'll show you the, the stamp first because you're gonna want it. I promise you guys. It's called Peony Blooms. So if I can, so Peony Blooms, and look at that beautiful peony uh, kind of bouquet, the uh, solitary one, and then some of the smaller blooms. And it has three different um, sentiments. One says, "Thinking of you, thanks so much, or thank you so much, and happy anniversary." Some really great uh, sentiments to put on cards. So sorry about that glare. There's always a glare. It's hard for me to do that. So there's that. Okay, so that's the stamp set that I used. And the card, now this is a card, if you're one of the coach, if you're a coach already, then you probably have seen the card because I'm submitting it for the designer um, showcase opportunity that uh, we're having uh, with our company. But here's the card. And I know that lighting is kind of funky, so I'll just zoom in a little bit. So basically it's that cluster, peony cluster um, kind of uh, stamped. Uh, it's actually embossed in gold there and watercolored, which I'm gonna show you how I colored these so you also can create it. I, I break it down to really easy, you can do it. Now there is quite a lot of fussy cutting and I know that a lot of you guys don't like fussy cutting. So if this is you, then you can do the same technique, but maybe uh, onto directly onto a white card base and not cut the flowers out and then just leave them that way. You might have to do some masking, um, but if you don't mind the fussy cutting, then this is a fun, beautiful card that you can do. It's very simple beside the watercolor technique. Um, there's only one die cut and then the gold embossed hello. Isn't that beautiful? up close on the gold embossing there. I don't know if you can see that. I don't know if you can pick up the gold embossing on the flowers, um, but oh, there it is. You can kind of see it there on the blue. It's very fun. So I'm actually gonna create, I'm gonna show you how to make this card, but somebody had on the Coach Connection for our coaches page, for those that are coaches, gave me the idea of, ooh, I, it would look really pretty with a vellum piece back here. And so I am going to do that with this tutorial, but I love this one too, so I'm gonna give you two options, okay? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and figure out how to rig the camera so that you can see what I'm doing here on the table because I don't have my normal rigging up at the top of <laughs> on the ceiling. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and show you how it's done. All righty. Okay, so here we go, we have our card right here and yeah forgive me I might have yeah might hear me hiccup here in a second but so please forgive me but uh, moving on we have our stamp set of course it's peony blooms excuse me um, with the beautiful blooms and the sentiments like I showed you just a minute ago and that takes care of all of these images here but the hello actually comes from 
this stamp set here, which is called Dear Rose, and it is gorgeous. And I can't wait to make a card with this, with this beautiful rose image. But this is, um, these here are some of my favorite new sentiments that we have in our catalog, our new catalog. Um, so you definitely don't want to miss out on this stamp set either. So these two stamp sets are the ones that we'll be, excuse me, using today. Um, awesome, awesome stamp sets. Again, very beautiful, very versatile as far as being able to use the sentiments in all sorts of different kinds of cards. So um, we're going to go ahead and put that aside. And the other thing that you'll be using is um, the dies that are called ornate labels. Now I don't have the packaging to show you. I might be able to put it up um, in the when I edit edit my video. Excuse me, edit my video. But basically, it's the die that creates this beautiful shape. Isn't that gorgeous? Now, I'm going to lift this up to the camera so you can kind of see the little details there along the edges. So our ornate labels. There's actually two sets here. We have the ornate labels dies that actually cut cut out the shape and then the ornate labels piercing elements. And I love this little enhancement detail that we carry in lots of our dies. We have this little piercing element feature. So you'll use both of those. So um, I'm not gonna go ahead and show you because again, I don't have that here with me. But again, ornate labels die and you're going to die, cut, excuse me, die cut, I believe it's the third size down um, to create this size. Now. I will say this, this is kind of card one that I'm showing you and today I'm going to create a slightly different look so I want to show it, go ahead and bring what uh, the die cuts that I did. I actually used some, some of our vellum paper and I did, again, it's the same size, so, so go ahead and you'll die cut one of those, I believe again, third size down of this uh, ornate labels and then die cut the next smallest one down and using the hello from the Dear Rose stamp set, this little set here, I want you to stamp the hello in clear emb embossing powder and then emboss it, excuse me, with our uh, clear embossing ink pad, then emboss it in gold. And that's how we got that beautiful hello. So for my card that I'm making today, and oh my gosh, these hiccups are hilarious. Um, I'm going to put this element as opposed to this, because I love, again, someone has suggested suggested that, and I love the idea. So we're going to put this on our card and see which one we like better, okay? So this will be something you'll need to do separate, just have the pieces kind of ready to go. Again, ornate labels, um, dies, and ornate labels ornate label piercing elements if you want to use this one here. Okay, and so I'm going to go ahead and set that aside. Normally I would show you uh, the embossing po portion of this, but again, limited on supplies here. So I'm going to go ahead and stick this to the side. The next thing you're going to need to do is on some white whipped cream paper, um, you're going to, using the clear embossing ink, emboss through three of this big larger bloom uh, in gold and four of the sm small kind of single flower stem. Now you'll see here I've got one already done and actually most of mine are done but for the sake of time I went ahead and trimmed this. Nor excuse me, normally I would color first before I trim. You can see I already started with the yellow um, but for the sake of time and for my video, I went ahead and embossed everything and I went ahead and color, or excuse me, um, cut this one out, fussy cut it out. So you will do this three times. Now I'll go ahead and bring up what I mean here. So you'll do that once, twice, and then three times. Okay. Now, obviously I've already co colored these two, but I want you to know what you'll need as far as card assembly. So let me see if I move this down a little bit further. And of course these little guys he here, me all these hiccups. <laughs> okay, and so I'll go ahead and bring this up close. So you'll see what I did here. I left some of the little harder to reach areas um, white and that is completely okay. Um, of course you can see the colors and I'm gonna show you how, how I watercolored it in here in just a minute, but just so you guys can see. 
So this is what you'll need to create this. And of course, with these two little die cut pieces that I'm kind of changing up. So you can choose either the solid one or you can use the uh, vellum paper with the smaller um, die cut. Now this is our Denim Days uh, uh, cardstock. So you will need a piece of that as well. All right, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and move these guys off the side a little bit and I'll bring them back once we're ready to assemble. But for now I wanna focus just on our water coloring. Now we're gonna use our water, excuse me, our um, color splash pencils, so watercolor pencils. And we, we use quite a few of them. And I'll go ahead and have them out. Now in order to achieve the look that I just, you know, that we kind of, that I create, excuse me, created with this card, um, I used three shades of each blue, uh, green, green and kind of some peach pinky kind of colors okay I'll go ahead and start with our blue and show you show you exactly the pencils I'm using I'm using 25 26 and 29 so basically three different shades of blue and the same for the other colors that I'll bring back out in a minute the other thing that I use here are our blend blending brushes. They're specifically made for, you can fill up with water or you can fill it up with a blending solution if you're using some of our other um, coloring mediums like our inks and such. And you can choose which size brush works for you. Now I'm going to be coloring these and to be quite honest I think I, in the, excuse me, when I made this originally I think I used each one of each of these depending upon the size of the area that I was using um, but in this instance I think I'm just going to go ahead and stick with my large um, I might switch over to a medium um, or a small for the leaf area but we'll see, we'll see what strikes my fancy, my fancy. Now I'm going to see if I can zoom in just a little bit so that we can get a good view here of what I'm coloring and please forgive me if it's move, moving a little bit, but I think that's probably pretty good. Now, the one thing you want to make sure is if you've used your coloring, your blender brushes before, to have a glass of water available or something to kind of clean those off with because they hold, excuse me, hold color really well. And you might start coloring, um, you know, thinking that you're good to go and have a clean brush and then all of a sudden your paint turns brown because you used... Um, you know green or whatever and you can see this has a, quite a bit of yellow in it still so I don't want that to mix I want my flowers to be pink so this is a great example of that or excuse me I'm, I'm starting with my blue one so I don't want them to be green so do make sure your brushes are nice and clean all right so we're going to take the light excuse me, lightest color, and I am so sorry with those hiccups, guys. And um, I'm just gonna do this on the back of one of my sheets here. And you're gonna get a little bit of, just a tad bit of water. You don't want a lot of water. Of water. We are going for a watercolor look, yes, but um, I want this to be decently opaque, and so the um, less water that you have, the more opaque it's, it's gonna be. And so I'm going to go ahead and just drag, you see what I'm doing here? I'm dragging color out from the um, watercolor pencil. And I don't need a whole, whole bunch, but I am going to be coloring the majority of the flower here. And I'm going to color our large bloom um, with this blue. And I am going to try to make sure I just get the petals here. I'm going to not trying to not get the middle because the middle of these flowers I'm going to color in yellow and again we're doing light to dark and we want to lay down our lightest color layer first obviously because this if you start with light you can gradually get darker if you start with your darker color you cannot gradually get light so that is why we always tend to start with our lightest color first. Okay, all right, so kind of gotten that one little layer, very, very light, but still very pretty blue. Next, we're gonna grab our number 26, 
Do the same thing, grab just a little bit of water on your brush and then pull out that color. And this one I do want, it's naturally already darker. Uh, so we can do it one or two ways. One, just, you know, because you have a darker pencil, even though you might have a lot of water, it'll still be dark. Um, or you can have less, less water for a more opaque look. And you can just kind of play around with that. Um, and then from here, I am going to try to come in and just go over any areas that I think I want to be a little bit more dark. Now here I think is where probably people are like, uh, I don't know what other area I should do dark. Um, and so what I was using with these flowers is the inside of the petals. So any area where it looks like it's the inside of a petal, I'm gonna go over it and make it a little darker. Um, and so here's the inside. So this would be the outside kind of furling in, right? So I'm just gonna get the insides here. Come back and get some more. And keep in mind that this is a layering process. So um, you might, I say you might, you will come and we'll kind of get as much of this, the inside that we think is the inside. And then maybe you'll notice another spot that you missed. You can always go back and layer some more. Um, so at this point, I'm kind of at, ran out of the paint here, which is fine because I can go grab more water, or I can dab my uh, paintbrush to water and then come and get paint directly from the tip of the brush. And this is going to give me a more opaque look, um, a little bit of a darker blue here. Now, again, it's, it's about the same as what I just did, but I think I've got all the insides of my petals. So now I'm going to kind of come and I'm going to get the bottoms little air areas where the seam, I guess, I don't know uh, another word for it, where the inside of the petals meet, I guess, right, from the core. And also wherever there may be a, a possibility for a shadow, um, we're gonna go ahead and do that. So, I'm gonna come back and just make sure I've got all my areas that might could be a little darker, yeah, that's good, pretty good there. Anywhere again where the seams meet, I think that's decent, pretty good right now, right? Okay, now the next part is to grab your darkest blue, which in this instance, yikes, let's make sure we have all our pieces out of the way. I've got blue on my vellum, ah. That should fix that. Um, we're going to get our darker pencil, which is R29. And with this one, I am actually going to switch over to um, at least the medium because I don't want a whole bunch of this blue. I just want a little bit. Again, making sure that my pencil is cleaned out. Yep, that looks pretty good. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and grab a little bit of water. And I am going to, because I don't want to go in with heavy, 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 heavy dark blue and kind of ruin this look I've already created. I'm just gonna grab the water and the color from the pencil and dab it onto my little board here. And I'm gonna grab my color from, he from here first, okay? Now from here, I do wanna be extra careful because I don't want dark blue everywhere because if I do dark blue everywhere, it's gonna take away from my, con my contrasting colors. So I I'm just gonna come in and just along the edges here where um, the insides of my petals are. I'm gonna come and I'm just gonna kind of outline it. So it's really kind of where my darker shadows would be. Be in here. And if you find your brush has quite a bit of water, then damp it down. So mine does have quite a bit of water right now, but I think it's, it's slowly running out, so that's good. It's also part of the look, so I'm not gonna worry too much about that. So just along the edges where the inside of those petals would naturally be. Um, I, I dabbed it just a little bit so that it would be a little bit easier to make it flow. I do want it to be, um, I don't necessarily want this straight line all the way across. Cross, I do want it to kind of fade, and that is kind of the beauty of the watercolor, is that it can um, just kind of naturally kind of 
spread out a little bit and gives more of a natural look. Okay, so I'm going to keep going, getting maybe a little bit more color, and now I'm going to bring it in just lightly into this petal, and maybe inside here. Again, just wherever it would, hello phone, just wherever you would naturally see a little bit of shading in here. Oops, we missed that petal, didn't we, this inside part. And this one I'm actually going to try to create, a, make it pretty dark, or at least maybe the darkest area. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I'm going to get, I'm going to clean out my brush just a little bit over here. And I'm going to come back and I'm just going to try to blend out. So I'm basically coming at it with a wet brush here, so not much pigment at all. And I'm just going to blend a little bit. I don't necessarily want stark lines, you know, where there's an obvious dark line and a light kind of area. And I'm just going to, again, oh, just a wet, a wet brush with no color will help you blend those two areas together. Now you won't, you will have some lines that are kind of obviously, um, you know, dark and light, but you just try not to have too many of them. It's nice to have just a nice little easy kind of blending. There we go. Now, to create even more contrast, I can come back and go direct from pencil to paper. And I don't blend too much, and this I don't actually give or put too much color, just very lightly. I might just touch here and there. Not a lot of color, really, and I'm not touching down too much, just a little bit here and there, just to create just that extra bit of dimension, that extra bit of interest or variety into your piece as far as color goes just a little bit and I might come back and I might touch on that I'll just a tad with a wet brush not a you know not a colored brush just a wet brush and I even dabbed it just a little bit and I just might you know touch on that here and there and not any particular stroke but just just kind of making it a little bit less um, stark there's that and I think I want some of my blue little petals here to be a little bit more blue. So I'm going to try to go over that just a little bit and you'll you'll see it'll take on a little bit of a darker blue because I'm kind of I'm pulling from some of the color that's already laid down like this here and coming over that piece there. So that just kind of my leaves were a little light there, so now I've kind of blended it a little bit more. So there's two things to kind of keep in mind when you're doing this technique. Number one, kind of something, uh, uh, maybe some, what people probably tend to go for is, is um, blending everything. And so they lay down color, then they go all over everything. All of a sudden, it's all one color. So just kind of be careful with that. You know, you do want to see... Um, you know, some some different shades of color that helps it to kind of give that interest. Um, so don't overthink it, okay? If you need to, pause, stop it, give it a break, and come back, and chances are you're going to love what you see, okay? Um, and then the second thing, so is the, the other extreme is just to not blend enough, so you kind of have to find that nice balance. And really the nice balance is if you can kind of see that it's kind of blended together, kind of like this, and... Um, you can see that there's there's a dark, there's a light, and there's a medium in there, then you're golden, okay? So, and honestly, this is watercolor. It, if you, <laughs> whichever look you like, go for it, okay? All right, so I did the blue, so now I'm gonna wash my brush really, really well. And I'm gonna use my medium for the pink just, um, just because I want to. Okay, and for my pink, ruh -ruh. I'm going to be using kind of what I call a little peach color and a couple of rosy colors. So let's get those here. So my peach color is number nine. Then my lighter one is actually a six and then five. Okay. So starting with the number nine first, let's see if I can get my blues out of here. I need a little bit more space here on my table. 
Um, so with my peach, I'm going to create a little puddle like I did uh, earlier and draw out some of that peach. Pretty. Very pretty color. It, it's, it's Even though it looks peach, it's kind of like a peachy pinky kind of color. Um, and then I'm going to basically color all of this medium-sized flower here, except for the middle, because the middle I'm going to come back and color yellow. Okay. So I'm basically layering down color number one. Okay. So think layers, layers, and layers. Very light, and then light to dark. So the next one I'm going to do is the medium number six. Pink number six, so grab some color. And this, again, it's the same technique as I did with the blue. I'm going to come in and I am going to color just the insides. And if it's a little too wet, you can dab down, okay? Just the inside of the peach that we just kind of did. So the inside of the leaves. So in this case, the inside is here. And if you can't tell what the insides are, then guess. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're not going to... Um, you're not going to fail, I promise. You're going to do great. Of course, you can follow my lead if we're looking at these flowers. This is kind of the inside. This one, I believe, is kind of inside. Right in here. Um, let's see here. I think here's the inside. There's an inside leaf here. Right here, you can see. Grab some more color if you need to. So there's a lot of them right in here. There. Right, continuing this leaf or this little petal here. Okay, there. Okay, and then I think that's really maybe here. If you missed it, it's okay. Again, we're working in layers, which means we could always come back. All right, and then to go on with that, um, we will color a little bit on the outside towards the kind of bottom portion and then the la the uh, the shadows where uh, where one petal kind of covers another and creates a bit of a shadow will go in there too. Okay, and we do want to leave a little bit of the light, you know, areas down for again for contrast sake. All right, I'm going to bring in our darker color, which in this case is number 5, okay? Again, I'm going to pull out just a little bit of this color onto our little work surface here and use a little bit remember a little bit first and work from the um, work surface and then you're going to come in and again ag again going just along the edges here where the in closest to the center of the flower and working your way up and out okay and do try to kind of keep it to that area Again, you don't want everything to be dark. That wouldn't that would kind of take away the contrast. Um, and again, just kind of where the leaves kind of overshadow um, another. I say the leaves, the petals, a little bit in this one, right in the edges, inside petals, of course. Grabbing more color as you see that you need. Okay, all right, and remember we're doing layering, so even though the colors might be um, stark right now, we will come back and we'll blend it out a little bit with just a uncolored but a little bit damp brush. Okay, and then now I'm going to go direct from pencil to paper and add just another added layer of fun contrast little bit of color here and there this is actually my favorite part when you come in and you add that like pop of really dark vibrant color it just makes the card and I love it I love it go in there the inside there maybe okay and now I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna grab my brush I'm gonna clean it you can't see my cup of water, but I promise you it's there. You probably can hear the ting ting. Um, and then damp, dampen that. 
and then I'll come back and I will try to smooth some of that color out and maybe again bring in a little bit of that color into some of these really light areas that now that we've added the color they, they look quite light and so I'm going to come in and bring some of that color back. So I'm stealing some of the color that I've laid down and bringing it into some of these really light areas to kind of balance them out just a little bit. They looked a little white to me so I'm going to come back and add that. Blend a little bit. So again, you, you don't want to just go and blend everything and then you take away all your contrast. Just kind of hit, it, hit at it with a very light gentle hand. Okay. Alright, now I'm going to call that little beauty good. Got my blue and my pink done. Sweet! And now I'm going to go ahead and move on to my greens. Okay, so my greens would be all of my leafy areas. And this one's kind of fun. The green is kind of kind of unique, I guess. And I say that just because the three colors that I have, you wouldn't think would naturally blend together. But when you use them together, they are, it just kind of gives a really cool look, if I do so myself. So the first green is green number 18. And yep, we're gonna do the same technique. I've got a wet brush. I am using my medium brush. You could use your white, your small, but I think I might save that for um, some of the details that we're gonna do a little bit later. So I'm gonna go ahead and I think I've got plenty there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and maybe I'll damp this just a tad. There we go. And I'm gonna cover all of my leafy greens or color all. And it's just, you're just going to lay down a layer of green is what we're doing here. Now, in this area here, I do want to be careful because I did leave a little bit of white and I don't necessarily want to go in there with my green. So, just going to, making sure I'm, oh, you know what? These little guys right here are actually pink and I forgot, so we'll go back and color those in a minute. Let me continue with my greens, though. Okay, and looks like I might need to make a little bit more of a puddle there. Come back and get these greens. This is probably the easiest part for those of you who like the easy take the easy layers of watercoloring, or the easy uh, part portions, I guess. Um, and there we go. Okay, so now I want you to see something, guys. So there's a reason for the three the three kind of layering look. So we've got the green leaves right here. You might be like, oh, that's great. But when you compare it to one of the ones that are done, do you see how the one that has the three colors just has more uh, depth, dimension to it? I'm looking at the leaves, right? Depth and dimension to it. Um, let's see, a little bit more life, whereas these are just a little bit more flat. So. That's the reason why we're using the three colors. So we just did color number one, which again was number 18. Now we're gonna bring in another one. I call it medium, but it's kind of a dark, but it's just the shade that I was able to, that I decided to use at the time, but it's number 21. And it is pretty dark, actually. It's a, and it's, I say dark, it's like a muted, it's a completely different shade of green. There it is. It is not that, <laughs> okay? Um, and I do wanna use this one fairly wet, okay? And this is, actually I'm gonna make sure my brush is not too, too wet. Um, this one is gonna come in and add a little bit of contrast. It's gonna darken up the centers and the base portions of your leaves. There's no, you know, this one here, I really just kind of went, didn't have a specific thought other than, you know, if there's any natural shady spots, like if the leaf is curling where it would create a, a shadow, I kind of tried to make sure to put some there. It looks like I'm kind of running out of that. So at this point, I might just start grabbing from the brush. Now remember, when you grab from the brush, it will be darker. So just keep that in mind, okay? And then let's see these guys here. Again, I will, oh, I actually did this one already, but why not? We'll go and give him a little bit more. Towards the base where the leaf is behind or attached to the flower, definitely will be a little bit darker there. Now you see how when this is layered over that light green, it just kind of gives it a different life, which is kind of cool. 
one of the fun things about watercolor is that you can create all sorts of cool colors and mixtures and um, create really cool shades. All right. All right, okay, I've got that layer down. Now the third color in our trio for our greens is number 20. And this one is kind of almost like a blue-green, guys. And this one I actually went directly from uh, pencil to paper. Definitely, definitely be light-handed with this. I just used a little wee bit of it. Again, it's just kind of a, it's a different color green, but I loved the contrast and the cool look that it gave. And I will blend this back in here when I'm done. Um, I just liked it. I don't know. If you don't like it, you can leave it out. Again, I love giving tips and techniques and then you take them and learn from them and then make it your own. Everybody has different um, thoughts on what they like. This one I just thought was a cool, it literally is a cool green in the literal sense as far as color scheme goes. All right, ooh, I just love it. I love it. I love the dimension that this dark green gives, the contrast, so cool. Um, okay, so I can come back in with a, a damp, not dripping, but a damp brush. And I don't know if I even wanna blend that. Maybe I'll blend this one a little bit. I just love, I love this combination a lot. So I'm not even going to blend too much because I kind of like the way it looks the way it is. Maybe just a little bit. Really, I'm going to leave it. Okay, so there we go. So I'm going to come back and maybe on this one I will take my pencil and just color in that leaf or this little pod or whatever you want to call it. And I'll come back in with this little with those little bitty ones, I would use a small brush. So this is my small, and I'm just gonna blend it out. And then maybe I'll pick up some of this dark and hit just the bottoms. Actually, you know what? I think I'm gonna go directly from pencil and then blend it out that way. So there's a couple techniques there that you can use when you're creating and, and coloring with your watercolor. Love it! Okay, now I want to show you a couple things here. So remember, I already did, I already colored the kind of clump of flowers, the bouquet, previously. And this one here, I chose to do a little, I even added a little, a few darker little stripes here. And I'm going to go ahead and blend this just a little bit here. And you can do that again using a a damp brush, not a dripping brush, but a damp brush. I don't know if we can do that. There we go. Good. Okay, so I blended that just a little bit, and then I'm going to bring my third one out. And just, I want you to take a look at those three, right? So I added a little bit of a, a little more blue here, a little less of that contrasting color here. Um, and if I wanted to, I could come back, but actually I love the variety of them, so I'm going to leave them just as they are, okay? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, move out, clear out some of my space here that you can't see, um, and then I will start doing a little bit of some piercing, which we kind of, like I said, I've kind of taken care of that mostly already, but there is a few more things we want to cut away from here. Okay, so we're going to zoom out just a little bit more here. We can see the view there. Okay, now, so let's see. We have our little clumps. I've kind of moved all of my other supplies out of the way. Um, and we have our card. We've got these little guys. Now, you'll want to notice something right away. So the stamped image is like this. And you'll notice this one is missing. Um, some of the leaves here. Now, what I did was I actually trimmed those leaves off right here. So I think there were something, something like that, right? Um, so actually, I'm going to have you trim those off, and I'm going to go ahead and do that for this set as well. 
Now the reason being is these two sides are not going to be seen and I wanted to salvage these guys and I wanted to use them for part of our card. Now you'll also notice I am using some kid scissors. So sad, you wanna hear a sad story? Everybody wants to hear a sad story. My amazing journey uh, detailed pro shears, which are not these, were in my carry-on. They were short bladed. You guys have seen them over and over. And um, you know, our airline rules is and you can carry scissors as long as they're like three inches or less in blade length, I think. And um, it was true, I, I made it through Korea's in airport, I made it through ours, and um, apparently, Thai rule, you cannot carry any scissors whatsoever on your carry-on, and so they confiscated my detail brochures. I could have cried, I didn't. The guy was so sweet though, he was like, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, and I was like, okay, there was nothing I could do. So, this right here is what I'm using to cut, and these are nothing compared to our amazing Detail Pro Shears, guys. So, I'm telling you right now, if you don't have a pair of our Detail Pro Shears, you need to get some because they're great. And don't carry them with you in your carry-on. Check them into your luggage. All right, so you see here how I've kind of taken those apart? Okay, so we've got those ready. And the next thing you're going to do is you are going to... Um, with so with your third bloom or bouquet you're going to separate the pink flower um, from the set and I'm just trimming it not any particular specific way just separating it and we actually don't use the third blue one, okay? So um, I colored that just for the sake of you seeing how I colored the blue, okay? Um, which is what you would do when you did, you know, you would color these two. All right, so these pieces here along with, let me see if I can zoom out even more here. There we go. Along with our four little single stems from earlier, remember that? And then of course our little ornate labels is what's, what we're gonna be putting together here. All right, so we're gonna bring back our Denim Days cardstock base, and I remember I didn't actually tell you, this is just a regular A2 size uh, tent fold because it's my favorite. You could do a regular fold as well. And we're going to arrange these on your card base first. That's, you know, if you've seen my videos, I like to do that first. So you're gonna take one of these little guys, the one that you, you know, took the two uh, stems from, and we're going to kind of just, what I did was I just tried to put it right up to the top portion, kind of the top left corner. And then the other one, I did the same thing, but in the opposite direction the um, bottom left corner here, okay? Just like that, here. And then I took one of the yellow stemmed, and again, right now I'm just using, um, I'm just placing them, okay? We'll glue and adhere in a little bit, but right now it's just so that you get the idea of where things go. There, and then this little guy comes here off to the uh, to the side, and these two are positioned right in there. So, you know, when you compare it to the original card, it kind of has, it's like a wreath of flowers, and then this covers the center. Okay, so in your, in this case, uh, we are going to be putting the vellum piece and the smaller blue label right in the center. And we're gonna see how we like that. I think we'll like it a lot. Um, but let's go ahead and start adhering some pieces together. So I actually did use our craft glue for this. I just wanted to create a um, more of a flat card look for this, even though some of the pieces will be up just a wee bit. You could pop everything up, but I didn't really necessarily see a need for that. And so um, I went ahead and just used our craft glue. This little guy will work. Here we go. And I mean, I didn't put a whole, whole bunch. I just, oopsie, just enough to get him to, you know, 
stay down and again this was towards the kind of the corner edge there and this guy I just put enough to kind of cover all the pieces I didn't worry too much about getting glue in every single little crevice oh here it goes um, because I knew that I, I did want some of the edges to rise up I did like that look um, this one again just move that guy away a little bit there on the edge and hear him down and then I'm going to do the opposite corner so I'm kind of going in the same direction so opposite corner to opposite corner and then work around with the side leads I just found that to be a little bit easier for me to kind of manage as far as um, figuring out where to lay everything down and then trying to remember where I laid everything down from the beginning here and here we go and then pink flower just kind of went right on top now we do have some green leaves that we're going to come back and kind of place in between in different areas the ones that we cut if you recall these guys but for now we're just laying um, kind of like our main pieces good gracious that is not want to let go okay and now our little um, yellow stems here and again, one of the wonderful things about our liquid glue is that it will help let us to kind of shift and shimmy as needed. So for a second here, I'm just going to lay that down to make sure that I kind of have all of my flowers where I want them. The pink will go here, so that's good. My two yellows and maybe a, a leaf here on the edge. I'll leave some space for some leaves. Okay, that's pretty good and then I'll go ahead and adhere my third pink bloom there and there okay and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and adhere um, my vellum and my um, little ornate label here but first I'm going to adhere my Denim Days ornate label kind of sentiment panel to the center of the vellum this is now my main label and I, I, I kind of love the vellum guys what do you think well I'll compare we'll compare at the end okay and I did use um, some foam squares to adhere the labels to it okay and now because it's vellum I'm strategically placing these just on the edges of where the blue Denim Days label is so that it's not visible from the outside. Remove the label or the covering here. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and place this nice and in the center. And I do want to make sure that I kind of get it even. Is that even, guys? Forgive me for lifting it up here. Yep, I think that's pretty good. You know, I say, yep, that's pretty good, and then I go back and I'm like, okay, no, that's not pretty good. I think this is. Oh, pretty, pretty, pretty. Okay, now let me go in and fill in where our leaves would go. Okay, so we're filling in some of these kind of empty spaces down here. So, like, for example, I think I might want to put a little leaf here to cover up some spots. Ooh, I like that there. So... I'm going to go ahead and just put a little bit of glue on the edge and then shimmy him down there. I like that. Okay. And then let's see here. Um, I think I might put some, there's actually a larger leaf at the end here, if I remember correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and put that here so you're not wasting any of the colors any of the coloring shall I say that you did and maybe I'll put him actually off to the side maybe there pretty good might not be exactly how I did the first time but that's okay and then let's do a leaf or two on this side here to kind of tie in with those oh I like it I like it I like it so really with the leaves it's you just kind of go for it create your own look it's just a it's you're, you're creating some foliage right 
foliage kind of fills in some of the gaps, makes it um, look more complete, gives it a little bit of more oomph. And maybe I'll do this second one. Do I like that? I do. I think I'm going to put that second one on top to kind of cover this little blue space here. Not that the blue space is bad necessarily, but I do like, I, I do want to have it kind of ba a balanced look. There we go. Pretty. All right, so there you go. Woo -woo. Now, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and bring back my original card and show you a couple of things that um, I would do if I were home, <laughs> but I'm not home, um, to kind of finish it. So I would say this is 99% finished, but I want to show you some things. So you see here that it's got a little bit of some white space that we didn't, um, we didn't cut out. If you're a fussy cut extraordinaire, then cut those out, okay? So there and down here. What I did, a trick that I did, and I don't, you probably can't tell, but which is the kind of the whole point. But believe it or not, there's technically some white space here. And let's see, there's another space. I know I had it. No, it's not show. Oh, and right here. And between these little guys, you just can't see. I actually took one of my dark blue Copic markers and I colored in those areas so that you couldn't see that it was actually white. So that is a little tip and trick um, that you could use and do to fill in those spaces um, to kind of make it kind of look like you fussy cut those areas, but obviously you didn't, you just colored it in. So if you had a nice dark blue that matched this, you can. And what I will do is um, in my notes, um, when I get home, I will tell you the exact Copic marker that matches with this Den and Days because I don't have it with me here um, in Thailand, but I'll make sure to point it out so that you guys can have it. Um, again, unless you are a, a, a fussy cut extraordinaire. All right, so there we are. All right, so cards are done. And again, showing you the first one. And forgive me again with the lighting, lighting. I'm like completely in shadows, but what do you do? What do you do? Um, there's that. And then the one that I created today, which is like I said, 99% done. If I were home, I would take a dark blue marker and color in those white areas. Um, but what do you think about this one? This one uses the vellum with the smaller label. So let me put these up against each other. It just kind of adds a cool, cool little extra I don't know, something, something extra to look at, I guess. So here they are side by side. I know it's kind of hard to see with this lighting. I don't know, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Do you like the one that's kind of solid, just with the one label? Or do you like the one that has the smaller label um, in the denim days, but with the little added vellum? I don't know, I think I kind of like them both. This one has just a little extra fun little pop to it, which is kind of cool. We like that, right? I like them both, how about that? <laughs> very fun, very pretty. Uh, this was the original, and then this was the one using the vellums that, that one of the other coaches suggested that I use. I mean, I kind of took it and ran, they probably had a different thought, but that's how I thought to incorporate it. Of course, you see that shiny gold in there. And again, I would come back and fill in those little white areas with a dark blue marker um, and call it good. Don't you love this set, guys? Oh, I love it, I love it, I love it. Again, just a reminder here as I grab this uh, set from the bottom, I'm using our Peony Blooms. It's a hero set here. And um, really, all of, I've used almost all of them except for this medium one, but you could have used the medium one for that extra pink rose as opposed to, you know, using the side, this side one. Um, and then the single, and then really great sentiments, but for this one, because I wanted a short, just a small sentiment in the center, I used Dear Rose uh, stamp set with the hello. I just love that, the font that they chose for the Dear Rose scent, stamp set. So cool, I love it. Um, anyway, and then apart from that, we used our Color Splash watercolor pencils. So um, I know, guys, that those watercolor pencils are a big investment, but it, they are fantastic pencils. I promise you that they will last you a long, long time, um, and you will really have fun using them. 
And you don't have to be an artist to use watercolor pencils. You just do the lessons that we have in these tutorials um, and probably gobs that you can find online, um, simple ways. So hopefully you found this particular card um, and tutorial helpful. Um, go, try it at home, do the three different colors going from light to dark, trying to create a little bit of that contrast um, and some blending by using a damp brush especially if you're using uh, these with our, you know, these smaller images. If you were doing this big watercolor scene, it's a little bit easier to do um, as far as blending goes. So in a small space, you just have to use smaller brushes and then the layering uh, technique goes a long way. So anyway, I think that's it. Thank you so much for watching and for um, kind of putting up with my a different uh, scenario, different location and sick child. And um, I think there are people working on the, the lawns outside. <laughs> As we've been here, it's rained almost every day, but not all day, just for portions of the day. Um, but that means that it's beautifully green and things are growing. And so I think they have to, they pretty much landscape every single day here from what I could tell. Um, I say landscape, work on the, you know, outside areas, so. Anyway, um, hopefully I will pop in one more time while I'm here in Thailand. Um, if you guys are joining me for the RG Presents Journey holidays here in a couple of days, and then I will see you actually tomorrow uh, pretty soon. I'm gonna pop in and say hi um, and create at least one card while you guys are creating and doing all the fun things. Um, and I will pop back in and give a little video showing you that card and how we made it. So, okay guys. Thank you so much for joining me and uh, staying with me here. If you have any questions, just feel free to contact me. Um, you can ask questions down below. If you want to purchase the supplies that I used to create this card with, then you can go to www.bunstampersjourney.com forward slash Janice Whiting, and you would click the shop button, and you can shop like you would any online store. Um, I am happy to uh, have you as a customer. Um, also, there is a July sign-up promotion. If you just love our products and you want to become a journey coach, I would be happy to have you on my team. Uh, if you have any questions regarding any of that, feel free to contact me. Um, make sure to check out my Facebook page. If you just Google Janice Whiting Fun Stampers Journey in Facebook, um, I'd love for you to like my page there. I do a lot of uh, announcements and uh, different things, promotions through that page. So I would love for you to find me there as well. And I think that's it. Okay, guys, we will talk to you later. Bye.